call Jesus Messiah because he came to give us great hope. He came to save us from sin. Uh, his action was both futuristic and retroactive altogether. He was, as the scripture explains, the, the lamb that was slain since the foundation of the world. It was always God's plan A to rescue us and uh, to save us. And we get to see that very graphically illustrated in the life, the death, and resurrection of Jesus. And so when we get to share that message with other people, um, it's unusual. It's not something that, that just naturally people would assume God would have done. And yet, as people hear about it, oftentimes it's just absolutely astounding. It's exciting. It, it transforms their life. Um, but not everybody interacts with it the same way. And, um, and what we should expect as we share that is part of what uh, the, the, the gospel according to Mark helps us to understand. So Mark chapter 4 is where we're going. Uh, Emma Thompson is going to come up and read it. And as she's coming, if you wanted to turn your Bibles or just simply watch the screen, we're going to hear uh, some of the teaching of Jesus. Once again, Jesus began teaching by the lakeshore. A very large crowd soon gathered around him, so he got into his boat. Then he sat in the boat while all the people remained on the shore. He taught them by telling many stories in the form of parables, such as this one. Listen, a farmer went out to plant some seeds. As he scattered it across his field, some of the seeds fell on a footpath, and birds came and ate it. Other seeds fell on the shallow soil with underlying rock. The, the seeds sprouted quickly because the soil was shallow, but the plants soon, soon melted under the hot sun, and since it didn't have deep roots, it died. Other seeds fell among the thorns that grew up and choked out the tender plants, so they produced no grain. Since still other seeds fell on the fertile soil, and they sprouted, grew, and produced a crop that was 30, 60, and even 100 times as much as has been planted. Then he said, anyone with ears to hear should listen and understand. Later, when Jesus was alone with the, with the 12 disciples and with the others who were gathered around, they asked him what the parables meant. He replied, you were permitted to understand the secret of the kingdom of God, but I use parables for everything I say to outsiders. So the scripture might be fulfilled. When they see what I do, they will worry about things. When they hear what I say, they will not understand. Otherwise, otherwise, they will turn to me and be forgiven. Then Jesus said to them, if you cannot understand the meaning of this parable, how will you understand all the other parables? This farmer... The farmer plants seeds by taking God's word to others. The seeds that fell on the footpath represent those who hear the message only to have Satan come at once and take it away. The seeds on the rocky soil represent those who hear the message and immediately receive the joy. But since those, but since they didn't have deep roots, they didn't last long. They fall away as soon as they have problems or are persecuted for believing God's word. The seeds that fell among the thorns represent others who hear God's word, but only, but all too quickly, the message is crowded out by the worries of this life, the lure of the wealth, and the desire for other things. No fruit is produced, and the seed, seeds that fell on the good soil represent those who hear and accept God's word and produce a harvest 30, 60, or even 100 times as much as had been planted. So here at Columbia Heights, we talk about making disciples of Jesus. And to make a disciple, it means we have to help people to understand and hear and, uh, and kind of visualize what Jesus is about and to experience God's love as expressed through Jesus. And as we do that, um, we have certain expectations about those around us. We may have expectations of what other Jesus followers would be like. And so when you come to a church setting where you assume that a lot of people are trying to be disciples of Jesus, you probably have a preconceived notion of what you would expect in that kind of situation. Um, when you start to believe and then you start telling your friends what you believe, or you start telling strangers, or you just simply you know, just start expressing the fact that you found this great forgiveness and love of God that was offered through Jesus, Sometimes people respond well, and sometimes people respond differently than well, <laughs> right? Um, and, and it can be really intimidating sometimes to, to try to share, because you're just not sure how people are going to take it. Um, and Jesus himself then gave a, a really interesting description 
of what to, what to kind of expect. And he, he did so by using this whole story of, of a farmer. Now, we're not talking farmer with tractors and, and those types of things. We're talking about farmers that would have some seed and would just kind of broadcast the seed on the ground that, that had been prepared, um, oftentimes by hand, sometimes by some animals that would just pull some, some plowing equipment behind them. But, um, but to help you kind of visualize what this is about and understand kind of what to expect when you're trying to share that message of Jesus, um, we wanted to hear the scripture read, and now we're going to kind of pack it out. And so my friend Vaughn is going to come up, and he's going to be the, the soil. Um, he's going to, you know, we thought about maybe covering him with dirt and stuff, but we're, we're not going to do that. Quinn probably would be cool with that, right? Just put dirt all over your brother, but we're, we're not doing that. So come on up here, uh, Vaughn. And um, Vaughn, are you doing okay today? Yeah, let's test that microphone out. Uh -huh. Nice, I love it, I love it. I want to make sure you can hear him because he's got some good lines here. You're going you're gonna to enjoy that. Now, he's the dirty, right? He's, he's the dirty, filthy guy right here. So you're, you're dirty, what's up, dirty? All right, man. I'm going to be the farmer. I'm Farmer Nathan. Uh, and so I'm going to be uh, planting the seed in the dirt. That's going to be fun. I have the best, the best job on this, this little skit. And uh, remember, so the, the seed then is that word of God. Now, Jesus is the word. He's the living word. Uh, and he lived and died and raised from the dead. And when you connect with what Jesus taught and what he did, it can transform your life. But people respond to it a little differently. And Jesus said that that whole process of sharing about what God is like is kind of like this. The farmer went out to sow the seed, and he came across the soil, and there was hard soil. But the farmer was just spreading the seed kind of everywhere, right? Just spreading it around. And some of that seed fell on hard soil. So the message then is, through Jesus, you can know the love, the power, and the forgiveness of God. You can know it. See? What was that for? You bearded freak? <laughs> Sometimes people respond that way to the message, right? You know, just trying to help them, just trying to let them, you know, know that God loves them. Sometimes, sometimes it hurts, right? But there is other soil. There's soil that, that's good soil, but it's it's kind of shallow, right? You know, you might call it rocky soil. Some of you farmers know what that's like. So shallow soil. But the farmer, once again, loves people, loves the soil. And the farmer is letting the soil know, through Jesus, you can receive the love and power of God. Wow, that's great news. I can't wait to tell my friends, Trevor and Tyler. Oh, wait, they're coming over for Xbox today. For the new update in Minecraft. Oh yeah. Is that my Xbox? Quinn, get all my Xbox! <laughs> and sometimes that happens, right? You know, people get all excited about God and then, then they get sidetracked about other stuff. Maybe video games, other things in their life. So, uh, then the farmer came to the thorny soil. The soil that had weeds in it. And, and the plants could grow well for a while, but then they would get choked out. Thorny, weedy soil. Know that through Jesus, you can receive the love and the power and the grace of God. Wow. I'm so thankful for Jesus' death and resurrection. And it's amazing that the sacrifice was so for us. Oh, but don't, I don't mean to lose, but I rise here. You rise here. Yeah. That limousine over there is your ride? Yeah. Wait, you know what this lady's having? <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right. I guess I'll see you later. Yeah, um, people will contact me. Thanks, thanks. <laughs> and they walk away. Okay. You get distracted. Distracted by the wells, distracted by the ladies, whatever. All right, soil, come on back, come on back. <laughs> now, good soil, good soil, finally. As the farmer was planting the seed, the farmer found good soil. Received through Jesus, the love and the power of God, received it. Wow. I just heard Jesus' love, forgiveness, and power. I want to tell my friends Tyler, Trevor, and even my little brother Quinn. 
I I will I want to pray for my friends and my family. You got kids. You, you care about them that much? Well, Even your brother? Yeah. All right. Let's pray. Man. Let's pray. God, we pray for his friends. We pray for Bond's family. We pray for all of our families that they would be able to know your love and your grace and your power. That Jesus has helped us understand and experience. In Jesus' name. Amen. His brother. <laughs> now, obviously, we hope and pray that you would be good soil, right? But my friend Steve, who helps lead the, the Wednesday life group, uh, in the midst of his leadership and, and study, he pointed out something about this passage I had never noticed before. And some of you might be sitting there going, oh, I've known that since. Sunday school back when I was a kid. I had as well. I had never thought about it from this particular angle. I was expressing to him some of my frustration in trying to help people to understand the, the whole connection between us and God through Jesus and that transforming power and uh, how it can really help us to feel both forgiven and then also give us the motivation and the ability to love other people. And, and out of that state of just being forgiven and have that love, and he said, you know, in the parable of the soils, only one out of four was good. I was like, wait a second. He's right. He's right. So Jesus himself, talking about his own building of the kingdom, only one out of four of the soils was good. That's 25%. That's a 75% failure rate. And I thought, hold this, notice. That's kind of deep. Because I don't know about you, but as I've, I've tried to live out the faith myself, I realize that the, the temptations that are talked about in the soil passages are ones that I myself struggle with. The struggles of life, the stresses of life, the, the lure of wealth, you know, you just get, get overwhelmed with, with money problems, you know, the, the other people around you that... Or, or just simply God may be expressing something to us and we may just kind of shut that out and just be like, hey, not now. You know, I've got other things to do. You know? And then as we're trying to help other people to know that, to experience that, it can be frustrating. How many times do you have to share your faith with people before you find somebody that may really be ready to, to receive that love of God? A lot of times people aren't. If they're not already there, it's tough, isn't it? And, and so this, this whole idea of expectations, if you notice on your bulletin, this is kind of the final sermon in the series here, because next week we're going to talk about individually, what is it that God wants you to do, what does God want me to do individually, how has God shaped us to do things for the Lord. And as we start living into that, if we're not careful, we'll have these grandiose expectations that are contrary to what Jesus taught. We may assume, look, if I'm trying to help a poor person, Every poor person is going to love the fact that I'm helping them and they're going to use all the money that I give them very, very wisely. Is that the way it works? Uh-uh. Or I'm going to help these rich people to understand how to give, all the way, give away most of their money. I'm going to help them and they're going to be so thankful to find all these ways to help other people and to give away their money. Everybody going to be happy about that? No. But some will. Some will. I'm going to help people to know that they can be forgiven by God. And as soon as they hear that message, everybody's going to be like, yes, thank you for telling me about Jesus. Is that the way it works? No. And so you can be like, man, back when I was such and such an age, I didn't want to have anything to do with it. I have, you know, or, or here's, an, here's, another, here's another kicker. Every time I go to church, everybody's going to be so loving and they're going to care everything about me. And it's just going to be like, everybody's just perfect in church because they all love Jesus and it just makes you perfect all the time, right? <laughs> Do you hear the guy that said, yeah, right, was a pastor? <laughs> Do you hear that? Yeah, I know, man, right? It's, it's tough. I myself, I may get in here and I've got snow in my shoes and I may still be hungry and didn't eat enough for breakfast and might not respond exactly right. And somebody may then interpret that as, well, God doesn't care. I'm not God, but you know, when people visit churches, sometimes we just assume that 100% of the time it's all going to be great. Jesus taught us, expect about 25% from people and 100% from Jesus. A lot of times we get that kind of backwards. And I'm first in the list, right? 
I have these great high expectations for myself, high expectations for the people around me. You know, oh my goodness, if we just give ourselves to Jesus and we just follow the Lord, we're just going to have this magnetic personality with, with, where God's just going to come to us. It's like we're, 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 we're just like connected and we're just always holy and I have this great, oh, I'm just walking on clouds all the time and then you are too. And then when we come in here to worship, it's like walking in heaven, you know. It's like, no, 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 wait a second. Jesus said, there's a prince of this world and it's not me. And that prince of this world is Satan. He's going to be pounding you down. And when we get together, he's still trying to pound us down and make us mad at each other and, you know, those types of things. And it's like, whoa, wait a second. When we come in here, it's more like going into a hospital. You expect to go in the hospital and it's all healthy people, right? No, it's a lot of sick people that are starting to get healthy. And then when they're healthy, they're out serving other people. And then when they get sick, they come back together. So it's more like coming to a hospital. But we have the expectation, no, 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 it's going to be different than that. It's going to be 100% like heaven. And Jesus is like, wait, only one out of four was good soil. And even us, when we're starting to follow Jesus, we have our, our moments when we, we're kind of like the thorny soil or the rocky soil, you know? It's not always feeling like it's good, fertile soil where we're really able to multiply and help us. That's tough. It's a tough message, and I don't like it. And my tendency would be to just give us these unrealistic expectations, and, and that's popular, you know? Yeah, you know, give your life to Jesus, and you'll have no more money problems. Yes. And then you give your life to Jesus, and you're like, all right, I'm watching my bank account. It ought to roll in now, right? Because God owns the whole universe. I just roll in, and Jesus is like, no, no, no. Remember when in the scripture I said, in this world you'll have trouble? I'm like, but Jesus, I took white out to my Bible a long time ago, and I put that part out. You know, I didn't want to hear you on that part. You know, no, I don't want to hear that. Or, you know, like when, when we're sharing our faith, and person after person is kind of like, I don't want to hear it, I don't want to hear it. And we're like, whoa. And then Jesus is like, look, I gave that story, and I was like, look, expect that. It's going to happen. It's tough. But that 25%, that one out of four, will be forever changed, and will look at you as one of their greatest friends ever, because you took the time to help them to know the love of God. And when they get to heaven, they're going to be looking for you. I've got to thank you. Thank you for sharing with me this great message. Thank you. It may only be one out of four. Or even with Jesus, he handpicked 12. If he was picking a basketball team, and he's the creator of the universe, you wouldn't think he'd pick one that would be a loser, right? But he picked one that betrayed him to the death. On most of our worst days, we don't have somebody betraying us to our death. Some of you might. We could have some side conversation about that. If you need to protect you or something, we'll talk. But most of us don't have that level, and he's perfect. He's perfect, and one of his best friends sells him out to death. So will we have people let us down or sometimes go against us? Yeah. So kids, kids, will you sometimes run, against, run up against bullies that are kind of mean? It's going to happen, yeah. Jesus said, look, some, some of us will be hard and some of us will be thorny. Some of us will be kind of like rocky, you know? And that, that may happen to you. You may have a coach or a teacher that's just kind of mean. We adults, we're with you on that. We understand that, that you're, you're right. There are going to be people that will go against us or that don't really love God, that don't want to have anything to do with God. But then there will be those that because you were nice to them, you shared God's love with them, you explained how God loves them and forgives them, there will be that person in your life that eventually will respond and say, oh my gosh, this is the best news I've ever heard. It's the best news I've ever heard. And then in the midst of the storms, remember Jesus calmed the storm. But even before he calmed the storm, he told the disciples, why are you afraid? It's like, why are you afraid? I'm with you. God is with you. And there will be kids and there will be adults that we get to share about God's love with. That even when the storms come, they're going to say, you know what? I'm okay. God's with me. God's with me now and forever. I'm going to make it. And that person will be forever thankful that you took the time to share about God's love with them. We're going to pray for them. Pray for us. And as we continue to worship God, we've got an offering time where we're going to be giving to the Lord or at least putting these little green sheets in the offering place as they come by. We're going to have some wonderful music up here. It's going to soothe your soul. Like literally, that, that deep part of yourself is connected with the Lord. 
this will be a time where you get to say, okay, I want to be in good soil, Lord. I want to receive your love and forgiveness and power. Come, Holy Spirit, upon me. And when I walk out the doors, I am going to be ready to share. It's like that farmer spreading the seed. I'm going to share God's love with other people. But I'm going to do it knowing that not everybody will love it. There will be people going against me. There will be even people that call themselves Christians that are going to be kind of rough to me. But it's not going to matter because I'm doing it for that one out of four that's going to love it. It's going to receive it. And it's going to be just life transformed. Let's pray. God, all that we've talked about. We pray for the kids that regardless of whether their friends know you and love you or whether somebody's being kind of mean or they're just kind of feeling left out, help the kids to know that they're loved by you and that they can love other people because you love them. And Lord, help us that are adults, help us to receive your forgiveness and your love and your grace and that power of the Holy Spirit so that we can share it with other people for those that are ready to receive, connect us with them and allow us to see a little of heaven on earth as you express your love.